If you're working with tables that have over a hundred columns, it can be very tough to select what columns are necessary for you and which ones aren't. Now, if there only was an easier way to pick and sort what you need, that would make life much easier. In this video, I'm gonna show you a method on how you can do that for tables with a fixed character. The other day, I was working on a calendar table that included all of the fields that I needed. On my screen, you can see that there's a calendar here with 94 columns, and I'm not even done yet. 94 columns is a lot. The first response I get from people is, hey, Rick, that's way too much. I'm not going to need all of these columns. But the truth is, sometimes I need these columns for specific assignments. Now, a calendar table has a characteristic, which is, is pretty fixed. So I could add descriptions, but selecting what kind of columns I need is hard. Let's, for example, say we're going to scroll through this. There's 94 columns. And even though I've built them all like accurately and I did the best I could, not everybody is going to need this. But it's very beneficial to have a calendar table that has everything you need in there. So I figured... What can we do to make life a bit easier so that we can have a master table with all of the logic that we need for any project, but still so that users can select what they need for the project that they need it for. Now check this out. So there's a lot of steps here that create the columns. So, uh, and, and that's great because people in your organization won't have to do it anymore. But since these columns won't change much anymore anyway, here's what I did. First, I created some table information. So all of the column names that I have here, I just inserted a basic table with descriptions of each of the columns. Now, why this is great is this allowed me to add descriptions to all of the fields that I need. So descriptions like a data type, the order in which I need my columns, that is important because the order in which I build up my calendar might not be the order in which I want to see my values. And by adding an index here, that allows me to easily reshuffle the order while keeping my code very efficient. Because if I created a column first, I might want to reference that column later, but change the order around. Now, what's also great is that I was able to add some categories here. So there are categories for the day, the month, there's the year, but also things like fiscal calendar, ISO calendar, and there's even subcategories within those. Now, why would that be interesting to work with? Now, here's what I did. So based on my overview, I figured this would be very easy for users to start with because based on here, they can make selections of what they need. For example, let's say you only want to have a fiscal calendar and you want to see how those columns look like. I could now go here, say that I'm only interested in the category fiscal calendar, say OK, and I only have 23 rows left. And those 23 rows each represent a field within, uh, like a column within my table. Now, if I then go to the next step, which selects column, I could click. And what this does is it references the filtered rows tab. It does that here. And it looks for all of the values that are in the column column. So the column name here is also column. So if I go here, all of these values here, those are the ones I reference in the select column step. And since my calendar always needs to have a date, I basically said, give me all of the column names from the at ISO quarter range label step. This is the table that contains all the 94 columns. Then return me all of the selections of the previous step, this part, and also at the date there, because I always want to have a date in my calendar, whether somebody selects it or not. And now if I look, I can scroll from left to right. And on the top here, you will only find the items that are relevant for the fiscal calendar. Pretty great, right? And you can be even more specific because right now I said, grab me the fiscal calendar, but there might be some things here where you're like, Rick, I don't really use that. For example, there are some offset values here, which I find very useful, but maybe you don't like them at all. So you could say like, well, you know what? I don't want to have the offsets and I also don't need the composite time periods. So you basically select on your category here and if I then go to the end step again, then I miss those and just have 20 remaining left. Now, this is just a thought. I have not seen it in practice much yet. It's just an idea. I'm using it for my projects. I'm very curious though. Would you use this? Is this something you find useful at all? 
and what what kind of limits do you feel like you would run into let me know in the comments below let's continue the conversation and uh, i'll see you in the next video